In 2006, Nintendo took a bold gamble in a world dominated by cutting-edge graphics and powerful consoles they introduced something different. A console that didn't boast the best specs or the most intense games. Instead, it promised something no one had ever seen before. Gaming for everyone. The Wii didn't just change how we played, it changed who played. Families, friends, even grandparents gathered in front of their TVs, waving remote controls like magic wands. For a time, the Wii was unstoppable. But like all great empires, it would eventually fall. In November 2006, Nintendo made a bold move with the release of the Wii. Instead of competing in the graphics arms race with Sony's PlayStation 3 and Microsoft's Xbox 360, Nintendo decided to focus on something completely different, motion controls. The Wii Remote, or Wiimote, allowed players to physically interact with their games. Instead of pressing buttons, you could swing, point, and move the controller to mimic real-life actions. One of the games that really showed off this new feature was Wii Sports, a simple but incredibly fun pack-in game that brought families together and introduced millions of new people to gaming. It wasn't about graphics, it was about experience. What made the Wii special wasn't just its controls. Nintendo targeted a completely new audience, casual gamers. These were people who didn't necessarily care about the latest Call of Duty or Halo, but loved the idea of simple, fun games they could play with friends or family. Titles like Wii Fit, with its focus on fitness and health, or Mario Kart Wii brought the console into living rooms, retirement homes, and even schools. The Wii Fit board even turned fitness into a game. Suddenly, it wasn't just kids playing the Wii. It was parents, grandparents, and even athletes. The Wii was a massive commercial success. It sold over 100 million units, making it one of the best-selling consoles in history. And we can't forget about Wii Sports, which went on to become one of the best-selling games of all time. Over 82 million copies sold, thanks to it being bundled with the console in most regions. Nintendo also delivered some amazing first-party titles. Super Mario Galaxy brought 3D platforming to new heights, Super Smash Bros. Brawl was a fan favorite for multiplayer, and The Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess captured the hearts of adventure gamers. But as with all great things, the Wii's time in the spotlight didn't last forever. By around 2010, the Wii started to show its age. The competition, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, had evolved. They offered high-definition graphics, more complex online multiplayer experiences, and powerful hardware that made the Wii's graphics look outdated in comparison. Even motion controls weren't the Wii's unique selling point anymore. Sony and Microsoft had jumped on the bandwagon with PlayStation Move and Xbox Connect, which offered more precise motion tracking and, in the Kinect's case, no controller needed. At the same time, another major shift was happening, the rise of mobile gaming. Casual gamers, who had been a huge part of the Wii's success, began moving toward games they could play on their phones and tablets. Angry Birds, Candy Crush, these games were cheaper, easier to access, and could be played anywhere. The Wii, with its need for a TV and motion controls, began to feel less convenient. And then there was the issue of motion control fatigue. What started as a novelty eventually became tiring for many players. Swinging a Wiimote around was fun at first, but sometimes people just wanted to sit back with a standard controller. The novelty wore off, and as games became more complex, the Wii's simplified controls started to feel limiting. In 2012, Nintendo launched the Wii U, the successor to the Wii. Unfortunately, it didn't take off the way the Wii had. The branding was confusing. People didn't know if it was a new console or just an add-on for the Wii. With poor sales and a limited game library at launch, the Wii U couldn't recapture the magic. The original Wii was officially discontinued in 2013, and its online services like the Wii Shop channel were shut down by 2019. The Wii had a great run, but by the time the Nintendo Switch came out in 2017, it was clear the Wii's time had passed. Even though the Wii eventually faded, its impact on gaming is still felt today. Motion controls are a standard part of VR gaming. The idea of gaming for fitness, pioneered by Wii Fit, has evolved into apps, wearables, 
and even fitness-focused games like Ring Fit Adventure on the Switch. And of course, the Nintendo Switch carries on the Wii's legacy, blending traditional controls with motion gameplay, but in a more modern, portable package. So that's the story of the Nintendo Wii, a console that changed gaming forever, brought new players into the fold, and even made us break a sweat. What are your favorite Wii memories? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future gaming history videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.